uh, there is nothing uh, which you need to do uh, beyond uh, just uh, learning about divine will. So one of the things which uh, yeah, one of the things which uh, Luisa Picareta, you know, or rather um, the Lord is telling Luisa is that uh, we uh, need to or you know this book says we need to re read, reread, 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 and learn about the divine will. Okay, yeah, okay. Fiona is also in Canada. Okay, so we need to reread and learn uh, the divine will. In one shot, you will not understand. That is what uh, Jesus, uh, you know, uh, she's writing in this book. That is something which I really, really, um, you know, and like, and I encourage everyone to understand this point. This is not a book where you just uh, read and uh, you know uh, get it, get out of, uh, get out of it. No. This is something which will, uh, which needs to be practiced, and uh, and I also read something very interesting. I don't know, Jude, you have come across that. Okay. What is that? That is uh, one of the roles that we will be doing with God. Did you read that? Yeah. Okay. We we can become hosts. Jesus wants us to become hosts, uh, consecrated hosts. So that, that comes up in the later volumes. You know? Yeah, no, even, <laughs> even controlling sun, moon, you know, stars, all those things. See, whatever Jesus is doing, we, we do. do, we will do. <laughs> okay. So that that is the beauty, that is something which I, I never thought it that way. Okay, whatever <laughs> Jesus is uh, doing, um, you know, uh, we also will do. Uh, they are sharing in his divinity and being God, they're also enjoying the activities within each other. That is a communion of saints. Okay. Uh, so it is uh, when we say that we uh, are the body of Christ, it is not figuratively. Okay, it is literally. Mm. It's not uh, figuratively when, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, St. Paul says we are the body of Christ, you know. It is not a word which is used to express that, uh, you know, that condition or situation. But uh, that is the, uh, that is literally you become like Jesus. Whatever Jesus, uh, you know, does today, we will also be able to do. Mm? That is uh, something which is uh, amazing. I, I mm. never uh, understood, I mean, never, never thought in that way. Mm. And that is a unity, there is a unity prayer that uh, that is Jesus has given to Louisa. That is one, you know, way where you and, you know, Jesus and you become one. Okay, that is uh, something which uh, we need to learn. Mm. So, Brother Joe's like the black belt in karate, which level is this? Huh? <laughs> Like black belt in karate, which level is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, that is something which is very interesting. So, one thing which we will have, all of us, one, one of the th things which we all have in common is, uh, the book says, is the cross. Not the same cross, the idea of the cross. You know, uh, rest of it is uh, something which is... Uh, which is which is unique. Okay, so let's start okay. with the prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Father, in your hands we place this evening. Thank you, Lord, for uh, revealing to us about divine will. More and more you open to us, Lord Jesus, the truth about your will. Thank you more. It is exciting, O oh Lord. The exciting it is, Lord Jesus, to live in you, to live in your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. So, Jude, before, uh, can you uh, clearly articulate the difference between the round and the axe? Or you have not uh, really thought about it? No, I haven't gone that deep into. Okay, that. okay. Like, yeah, once I'm able to reach that, yeah, I'll be able to tell you. At the moment, no. Yeah, because so. round and axe are something which uh, you know which we need to do it, because uh, you know which is which continuously we need to do. 
Mm. In that agreement also, we uh, sign that, you know, we do spend a lot of time in doing the acts and rounds. That will, uh, that is a part of the divine will. Yes. Mm. What Jesus wants us to do uh, what, through Luisa Picaretta is that uh, everything we do, as St. Paul says, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Uh -huh. So, so Jesus, Jesus tells Louisa, he, he takes her to a, a higher level and yeah. says that, yes, very often we, uh, when we think of the cross, we only think of uh, problems, troubles. Yeah. So, whenever, whenever I'm faced with a difficulty, I say, oh, that's my cross, that's my cross. So, but then Jesus says that the cross has to be, the imprint of the cross has to be in everything you do. Yeah. If you are joyful, if you receive a prize, uh, you are promoted in your office, you know, that is added to the cross. So anything which is not added to the cross, which does not have the imprint of the cross, loses its value. So in the divine will, that is what we are taught to do. So whatever we do, has to have the imprint of the cross. So uh, Jesus compares this to the the coin. You know, any government, any country which issues which mints coins, they have their government symbol on it, right? So without that symbol, the coin has no value. Okay. So likewise, likewise, our acts, if they have to have divine will as our Maker wants it to be, loses its value. So Jesus tells Louisa Picaretta that a lot of people are losing the gifts that are available to them, the treasures, that is the word he uses, treasures that are given to them. Uh, the, the problems which come to us, the difficulties, the pinpricks, the daily somebody keeps keeps on nagging us. No, we say, oh my goodness, uh, God, please take him away from me. Yeah, I don't want to be with him. I don't want to see his face. So this sort of reaction we have. That is, that is a normal human reaction, a worldly reaction. But then Jesus says that these are the treasures, the gifts which I give you. Yeah. And most of the people, the majority of the people waste them by simply complaining, by saying that, please take it away from me, uh, by being uh, resentful of the person ca causing that. You know, whatever is causing you problem or whatever is giving you joy, Added to the cross. So I I join it with your cross, Lord. And then you have what is known as divine currency. So Jesus wants to make every opportunity we have to make divine currency. So mm -hmm. any problem coming to us, somebody hurts you knowingly, knowing that you are not in the wrong, accuses you so that he can get away with it or something like that. So take it with joy. Say that yes, Lord, I, I accept it. But I, you accepted the cross for my sake. Okay, you so, so we yes. can we can say this as a prayer, which uh, is, you know, you know, like uh, Lord, I accept this as a joy or a sorrow or a sorrow. I accept mm. this. Uh, uh, I join it along with the uh, cross mm. of Jesus, and I offer it to the Father with my love for Your glory. Yes. Hmm? For the souls, past, yes. present, past, and future. Yes. May you um, yeah, that is the, the big advantage we have through yeah. Louis of Peter, Jesus has yeah. revealed that we have to we have to atone for all the souls from Adam to Zachary. Hmm? So Zachary, that is the last man who is yet to be born. Hmm? So the last man to be born. Huh? We have to atone for each and every one of them. So that is what Jesus. We are the agents hmm, of Jesus to go about and do his work. The moment we offer every little problem we have, every little joy we have with the with the cross, so you offer yeah. it to the Father, it has divine value. In fact, uh, on, yes. on this context, on this context, uh, one thing, another thing which I learned is, even if a saint is doing a saintly act, not united with the divine will, it will mm. not become a divine act. Yes. It will become only human act. That is something which is there. Even mm. if a saint is doing an act, we say it is a saintly act. But that act is not united with the divine will. It only become a human act. So, which means a hu normal human being does an act with the divine 
will, uniting with the divine will, it becomes a divine act. So constantly reminding ourselves, constantly, that is what is the acts and rounds which, uh, which Jesus is talking about. This awareness has to happen throughout our life. Eating, drinking, uh, you know, running, washing, uh, cooking, all the time, this awareness of the fa awareness has to come in our mind, play in our mind as a prayer. Lord, I accept it. I offer it uh, along with your divine will. The moment we do that, it becomes a divine act. Beautiful. Yes. So that is what Jesus tells fellow Isafikarita. Lots of people waste the mm. treasures which are available to them, you know. When you have a difficulty, when somebody accuses you uh, falsely, uh, these are treasures which are available. Just say that, thank you, Lord. And I offer it to you. I add it to your pain, your suffering, your passion to the Father. So that becomes a divine currency. And it is available for saving souls. So what God wants most is to save all souls. So even the loss of a single soul plunges God into deep, deep sorrow. So... One of the reasons Jesus had told uh, St. Faustina that why he cried out in Gethsemane, Father, if it be your will, let this cup of suffering pass. Right? So he said, because in spite of that severe pain, the, the, the bleeding, the crown of thorns, the flagellation, the scourging, in spite of all that, he could see that some will be lost. So that was the sorrow which he had. More than the pain. He said, I've done so much, yet people will be lost. So that is the sorrow which he had. He said, please take this cup away from me. Yet, not my will, but your will be done. Because having done, you have the satisfaction. Yes, I have saved the entire human race. That is what he wanted to show his father. I have I have got 100% in my test. But then he knew, as God, that in spite of all that, there are going to be souls which are which will go to hell, and that was a big sorrow for him, right? So that is why he is eager, looking for people. He wants each one, each and every one of us, uh, to join him and say that yes, I offer this. Uh, today I took this uh, insult. Uh, it was actually not meant for me, but I give it to you, Lord, uh, as a treasure. You have given it as a gift. I offer it to the Father. With your precious blood. So when you say that, you add divine currency. And souls are saved. Like uh, St. Teresa of Lis, you said that even if you pick up a pin from the floor, that's an innocuous thing. Pick it up from the floor and put it and forget about it. It's lost. But if you say that I'm doing it for the love of God, I add it to your, your I add the cross to it. And then the father I can see a lot of value in it which uh, you and I don't understand. So through Luisa Picaretta, he wants to tell us that, yes, whatever happens to you throughout the day, hundreds of opportunities come our way. And uh, very often, there'll be pinpricks. Uh, and somebody will be again and again asking something which you don't like. You are, you are asked to do something. We have just come back after a, a hard day's work. And then you are asked to do something at home which you don't like. So these are things you know, which are available to us every day. And uh, you will find somebody who will be always trying to find fault. Huh? Whether it's a family member or somebody in the office, a colleague, or somebody who is always doing that. So you have to say that, yes, they are God's hmm, loving uh, helpers. So that is what uh, Jesus tells me. So you take them not as people who are nagging you, are troubling you, creating problems for you. You just say that, thank you, Lord. They are your little helper for me to add divine currency, right? So this is something which uh, we have to uh, practice and uh, ask for his grace and Mother Mary's help. So when we keep adding everything we do, and even when you go to sleep, you say, I offer every breath I take while I sleep. Every dream which may come to me, everything is given to you, uh, added to the cross. Then it becomes, the sleep itself becomes a prayer. So that is what St. Paul said, that you have to pray without ceasing. That is 24 by 7, as long as you are breathing, you are, you are praying. Is that possible? So when you are sleeping, when you are, when you are doing work, everything can be offered, whatever yeah. you do. Yeah. So that is, yeah. 
in fact mm-hmm. that is what i i was also thinking uh, mm-hmm. you know when um, uh, how do we do this 24 hours mm-hmm. so what mm-hmm. in this book again uh, what jesus is telling you invite me to do everything when and do through me so when we in the, in the mass we say this prayer no through him with him and in him so uh, in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor belongs to the father uh, almighty god uh, you know that is a prayer so that through him with him and in him is very important aspect in our uh, divine will walk you know la jude what is what is, is that correct absolutely absolutely you see uh, when uh, uh, brother ragu was explaining to us uh, the, mm. the mass you know the, the important part of the mass is that mm, when you when the priest raises the host uh, uh, with the chalice in other hand he says through him with him and in him almighty father we offer this sacrifice we offer this sacrifice to you forever and ever so that sacrifice of jesus on the cross is brought we unite ourselves we are taken to calvary at that point. and we offer to to the father whatever jesus offered on the cross his mm. fresh blood his life for the redemption of all of us so that is why the mass is so precious so mm. the mic smith uh, is available on youtube so he explains understanding holy mass so he says that hmm, uh, the essence the essence of religion is worship and the essence of worship is sacrifice and so far as we are concerned the mass is the sacrifice the sacrifice of jesus on the cross offered mm-hmm. once and for all mm-hmm. so that is relived mm-hmm. jesus is not again dying but we are taken to that because there in eternity for god there is there is no today or tomorrow huh? right, right. So, it is it is the now the now moment every time it, it, it goes on endlessly eternal now so there it is available the crucifixion and every time we offer mass the sacrifice the the supreme sacrifice of the second son of the, the second person of the uh, holy trinity hmm? jesus himself on the cross that is relived and mm-hmm. that is the beauty of the holy mass which many of us catholics don't realize mm-hmm. so it becomes a ritual we, we forget that yes we are there at calvary we are there that is why we have to bring all our all our thoughts all our worries all our happiness everything place them there on the altar and the altar is the cross so that is that is why whatever we do so whether we are attending mass or not so far as this uh, the book of heaven is concerned louisa picaretta's um, revelation when I mean, jesus revelation through her is that we can be offering every little thing which comes to us and that is what god wills so yeah. and every time we we don't do that we are wasting it so so that is that is what uh, uh, jesus tells louisa picaretta we are wasting so much of opportunities available to us they come to us every day the little, even the little ones the pin tricks you know, whatever somebody may say something you feel like giving back but you keep quiet the lord mm-hmm. i offer it so every little thing you do mm-hmm. so goes up to heaven and when you add it up unite it with the cross with mm-hmm. the passion the death the blood of jesus it has supreme value Mm-hmm. so that is what we have to realize that yes everything we do every moment is an opportunity so uh, luisa pecoretta had to go through a lot of lot of pain mm-hmm. so jesus had told her that you will have to suffer you you have to uh, go through the pains which i went because i want you to be a replica of me, a photocopy of me uh, everybody should see in you only me so mm-hmm. and that what he wants to see in each one of us mm-hmm. so the pecoretta's pains which she went through she said that uh, jesus had warned her that mm-hmm. allowing uh, satan to to test you so you're going to be put through trial and she said that he even went to the point of of uh, not being able to pray feeling bad feeling hatred for jesus 
for having gone put her to such things then then she comes back to us and she says that no satan you have no power over me uh, so uh, francis ogan says that she's there like uh, jesus before pilate uh, you would have no power over me unless it is given to you from above uh -huh. so when she so when she says to satan that uh, you have no power over me uh, it is it is jesus words to pilate so uh -huh. that is something which puts satan off yeah the moment you, you say you speak the truth to satan say that you are a defeated one you are a liar you have no power over me because you have been defeated by jesus yeah the moment you say that to satan he has no way to go he has to run away in fact uh, there is a beautiful thing uh, which uh, says you know uh, in, in in this book says if you are tempted don't procrastinate it Mm. meet the temptation immediately before a battle forms mm. okay? this can be especially good advice when it comes to the battlefield of our minds the yes. minute a negative thought such as fear worry hatred or discouragement pops up in your head get rid of it right away because before it becomes a battle jesus mm. cannot think these negative thoughts in your thinking understand this very clearly Jesus cannot think these negative thoughts in your thinking. These are not in the divine will. In fact, Jesus showed Louisa how he suffered a thorn for every thought that was not in the divine order. So don't pro procrastinate, especially in the battlefield of mind, because Jesus ca because caused Jesus to suffer additional thorns. So how do we how do we handle it? Is also something which the Lord said. you know immediately use the um, word of god if you uh, so jesus advised to louisa was not to procrastinate if you procrastinate then you allow a battle to form jesus set the perfect example for us when peter tried to talk to talk jesus out of going to his death in jerusalem jesus whirled around and told him get behind me satan Mm -hmm. and satan himself tempted jesus in the desert jesus immediately quoted the scripture so this is very important aspect of our so that so what what uh, this uh, teaching is uh, you know giving us understanding is that before it becomes a battle you know we need to attack it with the word of god the very thought that comes in itself it could be you know some hatred thought or dislike it could be even a dislike a thought you know immediately uh, you know attack uh, it with the word of god now at that time will you remember that is where the holy spirit comes in the holy <laughs> yeah. spirit will come in but for holy spirit as somebody you know was explaining holy spirit will remind you but you you should have the word in your mouth in mm -hmm. your mind in the sense uh, you know when you search a file in a computer yes. you go to the search button and type the name of the file the <laughs> computer search searches and uh, the when it finds the file it's it pulls out the file but the file is not there it says file not file mm -hmm. not found so yes. even if we don't understand the word of god when you read keep reading it we will be able to actualize this word of god by the power of the holy spirit you know one word which is coming to my mind right now is this uh, in 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 uh, you know paul says in corinth corinthians i think we have the mind of christ no, thought yes. when it thought comes you know we have the mind of christ uh, so that uh, can really uh, be a very very powerful word against the negative thoughts that coming in you know we don't think because we have the mind of christ yes uh, so yeah that's it so we have to keep on renewing our minds that is that yes. is what he says in romans mm -hmm. so we should not be bound up with the world hmm? we have to renew our minds with the word of god so the world or the word so that is the choice before us <laughs> and yeah. we are bombarded by the world you know the television uh, the, the so television. Is. So, so is attacking us mm -hmm. every moment so it's difficult and uh, at one point uh, in the first volume uh, jesus tells her that Uh, Luisa Pecoretta, it is complete, complete silence. So that is something which you should uh, strive for. So early in the morning, when you get up and say that, "Yes, Lord, I am with you. I am here with you. 
and speak to me in your complete silence. So that is that is something which takes us deep into his heart. Uh, he tells us. So we are so easily distracted. You know, once the day begins, you have the uh, the noise of the world coming into us from all sides: the newspaper, the television, uh, the internet, the WhatsApp, and whatnot. You know, every everything comes into us. The world comes into us in a, in a torrent. But then we'll have to face it with the word of God. And for that, we need to have that uh, grounding every morning. Spend some time with him, as Jesus always did. Mm, however busy he was, however late he was in going to bed, he will be the first to wake up before all others. And he'll go to a quiet place and talk to his father. So that is what gave him strength. That is how he used to charge himself, as they say. Uh, like the computer, the, the mobile or your tab, uh, which needs to be charged. After a day's work, you have to put it in charge. Otherwise, you can't use it the next day. So he used to get that charge from his father. And that is what he wants us to do. So wake up early in the quiet, in the quietness, complete silence. That is what uh, is mentioned uh, in the Book of Heaven in Volume 1. Complete silence gives him the scope to speak to us in a clear voice. Otherwise, his voice, you know, is uh, drowned in, in the in the noise of the world. So that is where we have to uh, be careful. So take that charge, that whole charge, when it is totally silent, early morning, even the bef even before the word birds start chirping. Hmm? So that is the time when he, he, we we can commune with God, with our Father, and with our Lord Jesus Christ, and say that yes, Lord, I'm here with you. Hmm? Charge me up for the whole day. See that whatever comes to me uh, will be with with your strength. I'll be able to face it. Give me your strength, your courage, your charge, your energy, your mouth, your wisdom, everything. So that is how we have to begin the day. And when it's, once you get into that habit of putting everything in the morning, at the moment you get up, much before uh, it is dawn. In fact, in the Book of Wisdom, it says that we should rise up before sunrise, before dawn. <laughs> Many people ask me, or my family, they are in the habit of waking up late. So they tell me, why should we wake up early? So I tell them, yes, it is there in the Book of Wisdom. You should get up before dawn. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so that is something which, yeah, and God gives you a free will. Uh, you accept it or not, he's there. Uh, Ever forgiving, so so, but you start questioning why should I? Why should I? Then he doesn't like that because you're questioning him. <laughs> so that is uh, something wherever, whenever you get the uh, the negative thought or something which which troubles you, which uh, uh, you know creates sense of uh, you know uh, sorrow or uh, uh, disharmony in you, then you go back. And say, yeah. Take up the Bible, read the Word of God, and or just keep uh, mum for a while, keep silent for a while, and tell him, "Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I need you now. Mm -hmm. I need you. I'm I'm facing difficulty. I'm running running through difficulty. I need your strength. I need your grace." So that is that is how we face and uh, and the sort of uh, trouble which uh, Satan gave Louisa as allowed by Jesus. Yeah, for not for uh, one day or two days or, or one week or one month, she had it for three long years. Uh, just, Im just imagine a teenager yeah. you know, facing yeah. Satan. Uh, they wouldn't allow her to sleep. They will pull the chair if she's trying to read the uh, Bible. If, they, if she's doing some knitting, they will they will pull it and they will uh, pull her hair. And sometimes they will beat her. Uh, so this sort of irritation, you know, constant pinpricks. No. Yeah. And uh, she had to go through all that. And she said, why all this? Story? And Jesus told her, just imagine, you know, I had to go through much more. <laughs> just yeah. Jesus told her, I had to go through much more. This is just the beginning. So you have to face it. And I'm there with you. So, so that, you know, and it became so very intense. He was afraid. You know that, remember that acronym for fear? Huh? Yeah. Huh? Frightful events. Appearing to be real, yeah. uh, she, she she couldn't close her eyes and sleep. She she used to fear that the demons will come and attack her and all that. So that she was not able to sleep, and that was the devil's way of pushing you. When you become sleepless, you you become sleepless for two nights or three nights. Your uh, mind starts becoming a little uh, difficult, and uh, you may go into depression. And that is exactly what Satan wants. Hmm? 
Hmm? So the moment you go into depression, you will start putting things into your head and say that, oh, God doesn't love you. You see, he has abandoned you. You're, you're, a, you're a sinner. You're coming to us. You're already in hell. So this sort of, this sort of, uh, you know, thoughts will keep coming to us. So, and that is the thing which uh, Louisa had to face. And then when she could say, reach that level, and she felt very sad. She said that her soul lot. And uh, at one point when she was about to, you know, give up, then God came to her rescue. Mother Mary came to her and she could see that, yes. And then she said that, yes, he could say to Satan, now he can go. Now he can go because I'm here. With and the Satan had to be when Mother Mary is there, when Jesus is there. They were yelling from a distance. That is what uh, the book of heaven says. They were yelling because they couldn't do anything. They were lost. So after that, she says that uh, they used to come to her, but it was not as severe. That was the trial which she had to go through, the, the test which she had to pass. And after she had passed, they used to keep coming, but with, not with such severity. That level she had to reach once she had gained that crown hmm, of having defeated Satan. Then they, can, they could not come very close to her and, and threaten her as they were allowed to do in the first place. So when we are able to say no to our temptations and overcome with the strength of God, we rise to a higher level. Brother Joy was asking, what level is that? Black belt, black belt or gray belt, green belt or whatever. So it is, you get a crown. That is what the book of heaven says. You get a crown and that crown is there with you for eternity. You will see that only in heaven. If you are able to defeat Satan and say no, in spite, of, in spite of all the pressures which are coming on you, and you feel that you are almost gone, then you still say, she refers to the book of Job. At one point, Job said, initially when, when the attacks came in the first few chapters, Job said, God has given, God has taken away, blessed be God. Then his wife herself tells him, why don't you curse God? And then his three friends, they cause him a lot of misery. And finally, he is broken. So he gives up. Then God comes to him and says, where were you when I created the earth? Where were you when I made, separated the sea and said, you can come this far and no further? They set the boundaries of the sea on earth. And I, where were you? So then he shows him that, yes, I am here, the maker of all things. And nothing can go beyond what I have allowed. So the moment you feel that you are lost, uh, you're helpless, you're totally down, then you're here, I'm here with you. So you have to keep clinging on to me. The moment you come to me and cling to me, Satan can do nothing to you. But when you say that, oh Lord, it's gone, I'm, I'm, what can I do? I have to face this tomorrow. And I have no resources. I am down. I'm lost. That is how people go into despair and yeah. commit suicide. You know, so, and it, that is exactly what Satan wants us to do. So, when you, when it is able to push us to despair and commit suicide, then you're done. But we forget that yes, the Lord is with us all the time. And the Holy Trinity indwells in us, and we as Catholics, we receive the body of Christ. So that is a big privilege. So we have to realize that, yes, whatever may happen, we may be beaten. You know? so okay. Father Pio was beaten. He was beaten to bleeding. Hmm? And he could not get up from the floor. He had to be helped. So, it's, But that was allowed by God. But still, he stuck. He stuck to God. He said that, yes, I will never leave you. Come what may, I will never leave you. Because the moment we leave him, then we are God. And Satan has total control over us. So until then, he's like a dog on a leash. And he cannot, and he tries to tries to cheat, tries to deceive us. The moment we re call the bluff and say that, no, you, you have no right. You have no authority over me. The moment Louisa said, the moment Louisa said, you have no authority over me, Satan was lost. And this came on. So that is, uh, and after that, it was not over. And after that, you know, she used to have 
ecstasies very frequently. And uh, every time she goes into an ecstasy, a, a priest uh, had to come and bless her. Only then she will write. Otherwise, she'll be as a frozen stone. Hmm? Absolutely lifeless. But she's communicating with God. So, this was God's way of making the church to be involved. Otherwise, it will just be taken as a revelation or something which was not accepted by the magisterium of the church. So the church would not have given its approval. And uh, Louisa at one point said that, why should the priest come every time? Why can't you bring me up uh, whenever I go into... Uh, she'll never say uh, ecstasy. She'll never use that word whenever I fall into my, my usual state. Why don't you revive me? But Jesus says that. When I was on the cross, I had a priest. Who was that? Did he have a priest? It was in John. <laughs> so, so, when I was on the cross, I had a priest. So, that is the argument which Jesus gave to Louisa Pickett. Oh, who, who was the priest? Uh, St. John, the evangelist. <laughs> oh. He was there with Mother Mary. He uh -huh. was there. Uh, and when he said, huh? no woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Uh -huh. So, he was referring to, to John. So, he was making Mother Mary. Uh, the mother of St. John. He said that, I had a priest when I was suffering. Uh, so so, so you, you should not say no to the priest. Because Louisa was not happy with the priest coming because, because everybody was coming to know. And the priest was not very cooperative. Uh, he was uh, always saying that, you know, it is all in the mind. Uh, she seems to be possessed. Uh, she's in uh, uh, attack of the devil and all that. You know, nobody knew uh, what was going on. In uh, Louisa Picaretta's case. Huh? And uh, Jesus was making the church involved by seeing that the priest comes. Every yeah. time she goes to an ecstasy, the priest will come and bless, and then only she'll revive. At one point, the, when she fell into an ecstasy before the family, that was the first time they saw her going into an ecstasy, and they were shocked. So they thought something is wrong with her. They called the doctor. The doctors uh, tested her, examined her, and said that nothing is wrong. Uh, she's all making it up. It's all in the mind. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, Francis Hogan says that today's term for that is psychosomatic. It only means that you're, you, it is in the in the head. It is nothing to do with your with the body. You're not you're not having any illness. But psychosomatic it is coming from the mind. <laughs> so this is what doctors used to say. And these these were things which uh, you know hurt Louisa Pickett a lot. She had begged begged Jesus that let not my uh, you know, revelations, let not my close union with you be known to known to everybody. Hmm? She was she was uh, saying begging Jesus, let this let not the world know it. And even her family was not knowing. Hmm? And when they got the first uh, uh, idea of it when they saw her going into an ecstasy. She fell on the sofa and uh, she had gone into an ecstasy. She was frozen and uh, they were clueless. So they called the doctor and the doctor said that oh, this is something, uh, nothing wrong with her. Um, her body is quite alright. Um, only her mind, uh, she's making up things, probably reading too much or something like that. So they, this is, these were the torments which she was, uh, you know, not able to accept. And uh, she was she was pleading with Jesus, uh, let let not the priest come, let not the doctors come. Why don't you revive me whenever I go into an ecstasy? So Jesus told her, I had a priest with me when I was on the cross. So, so, so you should not resent because he had to have the church involved in this. Otherwise, the church will not accept it. We won't have the imprimatur today. We won't have the book of heaven today accepted by the Vatican. Huh? So this was God's way of saying that, yes, your role you have to you have to go through all this and this is nothing new i have gone through this and i am making you like me that's all so it was very difficult in the later volumes she was able to but till the 14th volume also she was not able to accept it you know, saying that oh why should this happen why should this happen well let not the priest keep coming uh, and, and now you see lord i wanted it all hidden and now the whole world knows it and everybody looks at me with suspicion they think that i am making up things i am i'm possessed by the evil one so this is how people look at me i don't like it so this is the sort of pain which she was going through. but jesus said that yes you offer it all make it divine currency all your sufferings they go, come up to to the father and they become divine currency to save souls and after that in the later volume in fact, in the seventh volume, one of her priests in the earlier uh, age, he had, he had died. 
and he appeared to her and jesus had taken her to purgatory and he was in the higher levels of purgatory and he was telling the others you know you know this girl you know luisa picareta i was not uh, you know accepting that uh, she was having godly revelation i was only suspecting her it was satan's work but then what she told me and he was telling those souls in purgatory what she told me was this you know this has to be practiced by everybody um, that is the way of doing god's will you know he was doing that in purgatory just imagine and this was shown to luisa picareta and this comes later in the seventh volume you know? because but at that time he was all against her he was all with the family he was telling telling all the family members that no 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 nothing wrong with her uh, it's all you know she is giving in to the devil no so that is the sort of approach which the church had and which jesus had to change make them accept and it took just imagine it took about 20 years for the church to see that there is something really revelatory in what is going through uh, which uh, which luisa picareta is going through and it is only after 20 years she was asked to write down the bishop said that nobody no confessor who goes to her should accuse her it is something which is now beyond our understanding but it is god's work and i am convinced of that so let us try to help her and not try to find fault with her so that was the first sort of help which came and it was he who said that that bishop who said that will ask her to write down whatever comes to her whatever she feels whatever uh, uh, locutions the revelations which come to she has to write down so she when she starts writing it is already about 20 years that is why in the first volume in many of the uh, writings you won't find the dates towards the end of the first volume you will find the dates coming today on such and such in 1899 huh? that was the first time she starts mentioning the date and says that today i had this jesus came to me uh, she he revealed this to me he took me to this place he took me he showed me hell he showed me purgatory mother mary appeared to me all that with date start coming only from the end of the first volume so that wonder, is sir jod i wonder uh, why hmm. this uh, you know thing is still not popular uh, right now in our in our times you know hmm not- uh, in the uh, when you asked when you uh, asked well, whether each word of the uh, the 24 hours of passion Uh, yeah, yeah. releases a soul i started finding out where exactly it is it is in volume 11 hmm? oh. volume 11 uh, in 1914 it is uh, jesus in october 1914 uh, jesus is revealing to her i mean that is the dialogue between uh, luisa picareta and jesus and uh, luisa tells just exactly what you said now huh? so if she tells what is the use lot huh? nobody knows about it and huh? nobody is doing it he said don't lament jesus this is the word of jesus don't lament hmm? yeah. i don't know that even if there was only one person on that i would have died on the cross for him yeah. that is what jesus says so don't worry about the numbers that is my problem hmm? yeah. i will take care of that you just start doing your work you write down and it will take its own time hmm? and yeah. let us remember uh, in the case of st faustina also she yeah. died in 19 19- 33 or 36 i think huh? so the there was some uh, difficulty vatican put it into a cold storage correct does not does not not accept it they said no it's not not true revelation you know the church is very very careful but so far as revelations are concerned wherever the apparitions of mother mary take place they they are very cautious huh? so they only want to be sure that no you know a trick of the devil comes into the church that's all so that is why they are they want to make doubly sure that yes it is from heaven and it was cardinal whitella hmm? yes. cardinal carol whitella you know him so yeah. he was the one. <laughs> yeah. he was the one when he was the the archbishop of uh, krakow so he read the original diary see it was all written in polish and he being a polish he could read that and he found that the objections made by vatican to the the writing the diary of st faustina were all based on some wrong translation some misinterpretation of her writings so he took it personally to pope paul the 6th 
right? And he convinced him. He said, I have read it personally. I know Polish. And this is what is meant and not what the church seems to have understood. So there is some uh, you know, misrepresentation uh, or mistranslation uh, uh, somewhere. So this is the exact uh, translation. I've gone through it word by word and only after he convinced Pope Paul VI it was accepted. So, and soon after that Cardinal Vaitula became John Paul II. So, so, so that is God's so, way. I am, so, so, you know, I am uh, just uh, you know, the, even though I am very excited inside of me I don't feel like uh, Unlike the earlier times, you know, I whatever if I feel excited, I keep sharing with a lot of people. But this, I have a, I don't. It's not about I don't have any problems in sharing, but there is no flow that is coming uh, to share it with everybody. Hmm. Maybe I do not know because I I keep wondering why the topmost charismatic leaders, you know, whom I am talking, they have not even, uh, you know, they, they don't have any clue about it. So I'm wondering yeah. why we, why this has been hidden. Because once this is communicated to the larger audience, you know, the uh, impact of it is going to be massive, no? Yes. But God has his own way. No? Yeah, God has his own way. So my mother was telling about this uh, particular thing. She also did not know about Divine Will, okay? Mm. But I was talking to her uh, uh, about the 24-hour uh, uh, passion. Mm. So that is becoming popular now. That Good. is around, you know, in videos and various other uh, forms. So she was, uh, so this uh, particular priest was explaining and so this is a very powerful prayer, uh, devotion, uh, why there is no uh, indulgence given to it. Mm -hmm. So at that time, apparently Jesus said, uh, you know, this is above indulgence. <laughs> this is above indulgence. So, you know, that is the thing which, uh, you know, it has been told. Now, with our limited minds, you know, yeah. we tend to, tend to uh, suggest things to God. Huh? <laughs> so, why is it not happening? Why don't you allow this? <laughs> if everybody comes to know it, if every priest preaches this in the in the parishes, there will be so much of, uh, so many people who will be taking it up. And this is how I keep thinking in my limited human way. But God has his own plans. You know? uh, as high as the heavens are above the earth, so high um, are my thoughts above yours. So high are my ways above your ways. My ways are not your ways. You know? So that is Isaiah 55, 11. So, so we, we, it's difficult for us um, small creatures, you know, to understand, you know, the speck of a speck of a speck. You know? We can't advise uh, the, the maker of the whole universe, you know. So he has his own plans. We only have to try and do whatever little thing we, we are uh, supposed to do, which we are capable of doing. So if that little bit we, if we are able to do and if we are able to multiply it, so Jesus who multiplies uh, bread, multiplies, you know, graces. So if you are able to give it to him, then that becomes multiplied, multiplied. So that is what I think we have to do instead of trying to find out oh, why is it not spreading? Why is it that even some of the bishops and archbishops don't know about this? Uh, <laughs> so this sort of questions we need not bother because once we have come to know this, let us try to do what, what practice this so that we are living in the kingdom of the divine. And as uh, Brother Joe's pointed out, you know, we have God's will in us. We can say to the moon and sun and say that you stop there. As Joshua said, hmm, and the battle is not over. Well, let the day be extended. Hmm? And the sun stood for 24 hours in one place. <laughs> so it is there in the book of Joshua. So that is possible with us. Also. Once we start living in the kingdom of the divine. And our will is fused with the will of God. And it is only the will of God which is seen by others. So that is what Jesus meant when he said, let your the light shine so that the people will see your good works and praise the Father. So everything we do, we should always think about what glory are we bringing to the Father? Because that is what we are meant to do. Right? So uh, what is the time? 6.15. Okay. So yeah. So as we discussed yesterday, mm. if uh, there are some uh, sharings, it will be very helpful for us to you know get motivated motivated in sense encouraged so that we will be able to you know know that there is some progress and uh, you know we are heading on the right way 
Brother Joy is there to give us joy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was when uh, Brother Joe's mention of how is this not being shared. I guess they were waiting for the happy family's opportunity to do that. <laughs> yeah. That's where he's you know, in there to spread this. But yes, absolutely. Thank you, Brother Joe. Yes. We never know, you know, whatever little things we do, God multiplies it. You know? So that is the beauty of God. You know? We think that is what have I done? It's nothing. But then as he sees it, he can do wonders with that. So uh, very rightly, Brother Joy has pointed out. So maybe this Happy Families is trying to bring it through Happy Families in India. But in uh, Ireland, as we see, uh, Sister uh, Ms. Frances Hogan, she's taking yeah. classes. Huh? And uh, uh, there are different uh, levels where uh, she's now doing with one class. She's in the, in the second volume. In another class, she's in the 20th volume. In another class, she's in the 35th volume. Like that, it goes on. So there mm -hmm. are many groups, you know, all small groups. She does it in her home. Huh? Yeah. And these are all very small groups. But then that is how Jesus acts, you know, that, oh. that yeast. Hmm? <laughs> the oh. kingdom of God can be compared huh? to the yeast, you know. So three measures <laughs> of dough, just a little yeast, then the dough rises, right? Mm -hmm. So that is how we have to see it. So do our part and say that, yes, Lord, now it is up to you. You take over. Yes. Anybody else want to share something? You know, how the divine will is uh, helping you to, uh, you know, live better than yesterday. That is the point of discussion. Hmm. I'm sure uh, all of you are uh, benefited out of it. Otherwise, uh, you know, you guys would not have come in. Uh, but, uh, you know, it will be very encouraging to know that, uh, you know, hear from you how it is uh, getting uh, benefited. So I, you know, the uh, last few days, uh, I've been hearing, uh, not directly, Sharu talking to people about this dog episode, no? The pet mm -hmm. episode. Uh, so she's been telling, um, you know, few of her friends whom she is close to. I don't know what is happening to Josh. He's on this divine will. Uh, <laughs> he's on that divine will. Something is happening inside of him. Otherwise, he would not in his lifetime agree to allow pets in the house. Now something is happening. So I'm very happy about that. If I were even my, I myself don't know what is happening inside of me, but if something good is happening, I am able to. Uh, you know, see a difference in me, in my attitude, in my um, relationships, um, even the way I handle uh, the cross, uh, I handle the difficulties. You know, I feel, uh, you know, the Lord is uh, teaching me how to bear it, I, 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 you know, instead of me losing it and uh, losing the pool, losing it or cursing it or complaining about it. You know, I am becoming, the Lord is teaching me, not I am becoming, Lord is teaching me how to handle it. So that mm. kind of different. These are the things which uh, externally nobody will know, but internally it is happening. That is why it is important for us to share how each one is uh, is growing uh, internally, so that we can know that okay, you are on the track, or this is how the Lord is uh, you know teaching uh, you know a person. Yesterday, for example, my youngest son was uh, throwing up tantrums. I was uh, I was very very angry inside, but I did not show outside. Uh, then I also told the Lord, Lord, I am, you know, I'm not able to control it. But uh, I controlled, uh, you know, the Lord gave me the strength to control my anchors. I was I was at cool. But later in the night, uh, I was watching this movie, you know, Greta. Uh, I have watched it before, but Greta sent it to me. Uh, and I watched it again. The movie of Augustine, see, Augustine. Okay, in that uh, there is a scene. When Augustine comes uh, to Hippo, uh, to, to Bishop uh, Ambrose, and he argues with Ambrose to get out of the uh, church because that belongs to the emperor. And Ambrose and his friend comes and we will have to use the force to kick you out of it. And Ambrose was also very strongly, you know, he said, no, you, you have to kill me you know, to take this church. Then they were going out, we are going to report to the emperor. They're going, walking out of the, you know, Ambrose's room. Then he calls Augustine. The, till then he was so angry. But 
when he called Agustin, his face changed. It became a loving face. You know, so the Lord is teaching me, it is good to control your anger. But you have to grow to the next level. Your response should be in love. See, that is the difference. See, now we, when we, when we do, uh, when we uh, do, you know, get into something which we, uh, uh, in which we are in struggling, but that it will not end by itself. I thought me controlling not to get angry at my son is a big achievement. Yes, it is a big achievement, but Lord is teaching me that is not enough. You have to respond to him in love. You know, when he throws tantrums at you, not to just keep quiet and keeping your, you know, coolness or you, 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 you know, you are so composed. No, you have to respond to him in love. That is what Jesus did. Jesus did not just, you know, kept quiet and, you know, was uh, taking all the suffering. He responded in love. That is why when, when um, Peter kicked, uh, when Peter cut the, uh, you know, ear of the soldier, he healed. When uh, uh, people, uh, soldiers knocked, uh, he, um, uh, you know, he did not respond. When the thief said, he said, I will, I promise you to be in uh, paradise. All these are acts of love. So this is something which the Lord is uh, teaching me now. I just wanted to share it with you. And uh, somebody has shared in the chat box, Sheena Cherian, she has come after a long time and she feels blessed. She says, thanks, thanks, Sheena, sister. Thank you. So this is a blessing. Yes, welcome. And as you progress uh, and uh, face the difficulties and say that, yes, I have one with, with the love of God. So when you're able to say that. So as somebody yesterday was sharing very nicely, as others were feeling bad, but she was laughing, even though yeah. she had not got uh, that uh, uh, chiku or something which she wanted to have after completing her class. Yeah. It was lost. But then she was laughing. Others were feeling very sorry for that. But th that is the sort of reaction you should have. Uh, even if others are uh, taunting you, uh, telling, uh, accusing you, or even cursing. So if you are able to laugh, so that shows that you are living in the kingdom of the divine. Will. So that calmness which comes, it's whatever may happen, the storm may rage outside, but inside you are calm. So that calmness comes from God. And that is how you reflect God. Yes, that is very uh, difficult to achieve because it is uh, not in our nature. Yeah. <laughs> we tend to give back. Oh, as if I don't know what you are. Huh? That is what we would like to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Accuse, give back the accusation. Yeah, I know what you did that day. Huh? No, don't talk big things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that is the normal human reaction, worldly reaction. Yeah. But if we, uh, if we are to live in the kingdom of the divine world, we have to get over the world, conquer the world within us. Yes. So, so that is important. Yes. And and always act in love. So uh, I'm reminded of a story which I heard from a friend long back. You know, uh, Buddha used to go about begging from his ashram, and each day he will take one of his uh, shishyas. So one day, uh, as he was, you know, some people will give him rice, some uh, something, uh, dal or something. He will take all that. And uh, one day, uh, when he came to a rich man's house, instead of giving him anything, he just started shouting, him, you fellows, why don't you go and work? Uh, you keep begging. Aren't you ashamed of yourselves? You're able-bodied. Went on shouting. And Buddha was only laughing. So he didn't give him, he shouted and he went away inside. Then, uh, after reaching the ashram, this shishya asked Buddha, how is it, Lord? You are our master. We respect you so much. We know how good you are. God knows how good you are. But you could, how could you keep quiet when that rich man shouted at you? He doesn't, if he doesn't want to give, he should have kept quiet. Who is he to shout at you? So Buddha said, you see, son, supposing somebody gives you a gift, Say he gives you a pen, a book, or something, and you say, No, sorry, I don't want it. No? Sorry. So, to whom does that book or the gift belong? Uh, Buddha, Buddha asked, no? the Shisha said, no, To the one who gives it. Likewise, I didn't accept what he gave me. <laughs> that yeah. is why I'm laughing. He, he was cursing himself. That is all. <laughs> yeah. So, that is the level, you know. So, which, you know, it suddenly came to my mind. Hmm? So this is something I heard years ago <laughs> while in service. One of my colleagues shared this with me. 
So that is something which, that is the sort of reaction you should have when you are living in the kingdom of the divine will. Right. So it is not, it is not in giving back. It is not in trying to show that uh, you're wrong, I am right. Hmm? No. It doesn't matter. If you are accusing me, it doesn't matter. I know. Because the one who is to certify me is above and he knows what I am. That is enough for me. So, right. so that attitude if you have. So you will not be uh, you know, uh, provoked by what is happening around you. Right. Even if, so that is uh, something which uh, I wanted to leave you with. Okay. Yes. So, Okay, so we will close it now. Uh, see, tomorrow onwards, we are having the uh, Holy Spirit series, uh, uh, season 11. Okay, uh, Brother Anthony Thomas is uh, back. So we will have the divine, uh, divine will uh, only after we finish. I'm actually traveling uh, from Tuesday onwards for about 15 days. So, uh, so and Brother Anthony will continue uh, the series. And then after uh, he finishes, we will have the divine will uh, again. But meanwhile, I would recommend you, friends, uh, please go through this, uh, you know, teachings, understand it uh, and uh, learn from it. And so that we can have more experiences shared because we are all going to be used by the Lord to spread this, uh, you know, uh, this lifestyle change, this transformational change. That's what I feel. Whenever the time comes in, you know, whenever the Lord wanted us to, you know, get into it. So we will, we have to pass on to it also, teach people also about it. Uh, and so that they, they, they can also live in the divine will. So please uh, do that. Uh, so have a blessed evening, blessed day. And, and then 24 hours of the passion as much as you can. Huh? Yes. I'm not able to do more than one or two hours, but uh, please keep trying. Yeah, whatever you can. Yeah, because right. every word. I am I'm doing that uh, 24 oh, hours in the passion. So yesterday I did it and it was, it was very beautiful. I did the fourth hour yesterday and it was extremely uh, I mean enlightening and beautiful. I'm in I'm in the eighth one, eighth station now. Uh, one one station per day is what I'm doing. It is amazing, simply amazing. You know, today, today yes, yes, yeah. Eighth station yeah. is telling. This is telling that, uh, you know, there are so many people talking about me, uh, you know, around me, doing things for me, but I am still alone. <laughs> you know, so that is actually questioning our own uh, existence uh, in the in the spiritual, uh, you know, realm. Where are we? Are yes. we with Jesus? So Jesus to, for Jesus to say that so many people around me, by, but I still feel lonely. So our we need to really look into our own acts. So I felt extremely bad. Then I put myself in that position. You know, yes. where am I? Jesus, we say that I am with Jesus, but Jesus is saying I'm feeling lonely. So it's not a it's not a great feeling for us to, you know, uh, think about it. But then we need to seriously think and uh, understand uh, what is the level of our uh, devotion, our uh, closeness to God. So this divine will really will help us to move closer in that direction. Okay, God bless you all. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.